Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to develop and run for loops inside Python. In particular, we're going to look also not just at using for loops in general, but also with the, the use of the break statement and also the continue statement. So, as you can see, I already have my IDE spider set up and running, and we're going to make a for loop. So, a for loop begins with four obviously and what a for loop does is that it iterates or it goes through your data and it runs whatever command you want it to do throughout the data so a for loop begins with the the word for and then you type in your iterator variable so in this case it's going to be letter but the iterator variable can be anything you want it's very common for it to be i but sometimes when you're coding you want the iterator variable to have some meaning to the person who's developing the code or for people who want to read the code. So you might want to customize it from not just using the generic I to something more specific. Like in this case, I'm using the phrase or the word letter. But again, iterator variable could be anything. So for letter N, and here's where I put my data, America. So in other words, what's going to happen is, is that the for loop is going to go through my data set here, which is America, A-M-E-R-I-C-A. And it's going to do something. That is what for loops do. They go through a piece of data and run whatever it is you want them to do. Now, in this particular situation, I'm just typing a word. But your data can actually be like a, a data frame if you want or a, a column from a data frame, however you want to design it. But in this case, for simplicity, we're just using this one word, America. So notice how I put the colon at the end of line one there. And so now the for loop knows that hey I'm gonna do something to America but I don't know what I'm supposed to do to it and so in the second line we're gonna put okay for loop do this to every letter inside America so we're gonna use the print function and we're gonna type a little phrase here say this will make sense in a minute and then we're gonna put letter here so let's see if I can make this clear for you this is what's happening the for loop is going to go through every letter in the word America and for each letter is going to print say and then whatever letter it is so for example the first time through the for loop will take the letter a and it'll print say a then the for loop will go through a second time and it'll take the letter m and say m now just so you can know let's just see what this looks like so I highlight all my code and I press F9 and if you look off to the right you can see what happened here just like I told you the for loop took the letter a and said a capital a it went through again it took the M and it said lowercase m all the way through. Say A, say M, say E, say R, say I, say C, say A again. That is how a for loop works. And so you can see that it's a very practical way to do a boring task rapidly in code. Now, the first uh, example or exception or slightly different way that we can do this is with the break statement. A break statement will continue to do something unless a certain uh, statement is or, or certain uh, process is violated um, this is kind of complicated to explain but let me see if I can help you first I'm going to make a variable called comment and it's going to use the function called input input is where you request people to input data obviously input something and I'm gonna say here type whoops I gotta put quotes here type a letter less than five letters that's what I want okay just like so so that's the first thing so now I'm gonna make my for loop so for letter and comment that's what we're doing here and so now it's going to take whatever information is put into comment and it's going to first if the length of course, I'm, I'm assuming you're familiar with if statements from a previous video. If comment is less than five words, five letters, excuse me, then, oh, I'm sorry, if it's greater than five words, excuse me, print, the word is too long. Excuse me, right here. All right, and then break. And then we go back here. Notice how it's moving the the um the tab. Print say. All 
All right, so this is what's going to happen. If the word that I put into, that I load into comment, my variable, if it's longer than five letters, the for loop will break. It'll stop and it'll and it'll tell me, hey, this word is too long. That's what's happening. Otherwise, it will continue and it'll print out everything. That's what's going to happen. So this is this is what we're going to do. We're going to highlight this and I'm going to show you what it looks like so that it makes more sense. So I press F9. So over here it asks me. Now the first time I'm going to follow the rules. So type a letter less than five letters. I'll just put in wow. And you can see here say W say O say W. Everything works because I typed in less than five letters. Now, however, let's run this again now. And let's say I put too many. So I, I break the rules. So I type in something like wonderful. Now, notice what I get this time. The word is too long. And so what happens is, is that the loop stops because you violated the principle of less than five letters. That's why you have the if then statement. If comment is less than five greater than five words print the word is too long and break if not print and say the letter that's what's happening and so the break thing allows you so that your loop doesn't go on forever or someone breaks some some of the rules that you anticipated in the code now for our last example here I'm going to show you um, the power of using the continue statement inside a for loop so a lot of this is the same first I make a variable that takes an input and all I wanted to do is say type a word. Then notice how I put the space after the, the, the colon there. And now I make my for, loop for letter in comment. Do the following. If the letter equals quotation mark, space bar, quotation mark, then continue. If not, print, whoops. Uh, say you've seen this before letter okay so this is what's happening this time we're going to ask the user to input a word and so for letter and comment if there is a space keep going in other words I don't want uh, Python to print you know say blank because there's a space between the letters I want them to skip or to overlook the spaces and just focus on the letters so we're going to run this and so here's what I'm gonna do W space space O space space W alright we got lots of spaces there but notice how when I press enter there is no um, there's no say blank say blank what Python is doing is that it is ignoring the spaces because I told it to so if letter is blank blank continue in other words don't 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 deal with that if not print it that's what's happening here now if I go back to my first for statement I just want you to see at the very top let's say I put a blank between all these letters in America if I do that you should get something like this see notice how I get the say blank see so I get America blank M blank that's how I spelled it so I get the blanks here because I did not use the continue statement but in the last piece of code that I put right here when I do that, if I take my little phrase here, America, Mer I don't get the blank spaces. That's the beauty of the continue statement. So in this particular video, we've looked at how to develop for loops inside Python. For loops are a way to do a repetitive um, task throughout an entire data set based on whatever it is. In this video, the data set was just a simple phrase or a word. Um, but in more advanced applications of for loops, you can use them in data frames and other things to do very complex tasks quickly and efficiently. Um, two additional tools that you might want to use as you are dealing with uh, for loops is the break. The break will tell um, the, the for loop to stop doing something because of a certain condition and the continue will tell the for loop to skip something for a certain condition. So my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. We want to thank you for watching. Take care.